Hello, gentlemen. Hello, Victor, Anton, and Tagir. How are you doing? Hello there. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Yeah. So I already made a small introduction in Russian before I talk. So, uh, Victor, uh, uh, so the question from my side is, uh, what are the pictures behind you? What is the picture behind me? It's a, it's a painting by Nikolai, uh, what, I don't remember his name, but it's an impressionist. Uh, yeah, uh, Afremov, it's, it's the name, I remembered. Afremov. Uh, uh, yeah, my wife loved it, so. Uh, okay. I don't have books, I have art <laughs> behind me. <laughs> yeah, yeah I... Uh -huh. I, I wanted to say that um, me and Tagir, we were doing presentations about IntelliJ, but we are still learning from others uh, what kind of features they, they discover in IntelliJ. And uh, it's really exciting to, to be here today with Victor, actually, because I know he, he will present something that we will um, see for the first time. Okay. By the way, have you noticed that uh, all of us are Java champions, yeah. uh, including <laughs> our host, Alexei Fedorov. So we have a Java champion party here. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. So um, I should start, right? Uh, give me a one more minute, please. Uh, please. Because I want, it's again, I want to remind to our attendees that uh, we have a Telegram chat for every talk including this one and what you should do right now is to put yellow don't why why yellow yellow telegram button just under the player the player and join our chat i i need more people in chat so i'm waiting for at least 30 persons to start how many people do we have in the chat tagir anton how many people do you see uh, pe people continue joining right now. 20. Uh, I need more. I, I, I need... Now we have 20 people. <laughs> I want at least 30 to start. Sorry, Victor. We should wait for a, for a minute. Because more, I think... I pro I'm pretty sure that uh, more people, more interesting questions. Yeah. And yeah. Yes, way, yes, yes. As, have... Yeah, especially I want to add that uh, Tagira is absolutely right that... Uh, Folks, if you may be afraid or don't want to ask questions in uh, English, it's not a problem because uh, Tagir and Anton will translate it to Victor to English. That's not a problem. Absolutely, feel free to ask uh, uh, questions in both languages. Okay, it seems that we have our... Uh, Victor, you, you want to say something or...? No, no, I just wanted to say that please ask any questions you have or bring any idea you have at the moment you, you yeah. get it. Yeah, and one more thing, just two small reminder to all of us that we have a short delay between, uh, like we say in some words, and uh, our users delivers, deliver our content. It's like a 10, from 10 to 20 seconds delay for uh, to deliver video to, this, to, to their web browsers. So if you ask something, please wait for several seconds for, uh, to, to give uh, our attendees uh, an ability to answer. Okay, that's it, we have 30 people, it's, it's enough for start. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it's a great honor for us uh, to have on board uh, Victor Rinte this year. Dear Victor, the broadcast is yours. Thank you. Right, so IntelliJ Productivity Tips. I must say that I'm a bit, uh, I'm really honored also to have two JetBrains uh, developers in the, in the call and not what, not, not any developers like Anton and Tagir. So uh, I will wait for any kind of ideas, both from you listeners and from both of you, of course. Any kind of additions you want to make, please feel free at any moment. Brief introduction from uh, from my part. Uh, I'm Victor Renta, already you know a Java champion. I'm deeply in love with simple design, refactoring, and unit testing. And I have actually founded a community in Romania, which is now today one of the biggest communities we have in our my country developer community communities, focused exactly on these topics: clean code refactoring and simple unit testing. Uh, and I have invited you also to join. There are things that I do every month in here. Next one is remote pair programming. 
afterwards event storming uh, discussion with someone who is teaching event storming in Switzerland and so on and so on. And this is me designing an expressive performance persistence model with Java. So I'm doing things every every month completely free for, for the community. So uh, all in English, so feel free to join if you want. Good. Now, uh, I have a website on which there's a blog, link to that community, a series of my best talks and many other things. And what I do for a living these days, I am doing trainings basically every day for companies throughout, throughout Europe. Uh, my topics typically range in the Java world, so Spring, Hibernate, and Functional Programming, uh, Java Performance also, but what I'm most requested for are the topics that don't have anything to do really with Java, like unit testing, clean code, and design patterns. Uh, also, reactive programming more and more. The thing is that what's special about these trainings is that they are incredibly, incredibly intense. Uh, every minute, it's um, every minute is invested in someone, so you won't ever get bored. You will find a lot of good stuff. So, if you, in case you want to reach me, here is my website, and I'm also on Twitter. Not posting that frequently recently, but I will be coming back very soon. So let's dive into the po in, into the topic. So uh, I want you to all to remember the day that you first got your driver license. And uh, it was the first day you drove afterwards without the instructor next to you. So the first day you drove a car in the city without the instructor next to you. What, do you, what did you do? You took probably two black t-shirts with you and a pair of extra pants, brown pants, just in case. The first day you ever drove alone, right? And then you have to get on the road, right? You have to make sure the seat belt is set. You have to adjust the mirrors. Remember what your your, your driving teacher uh, told you to do every time? And then the signal. And then you check the mirror. You put it in the first gear. You, you take very much care to be exactly at this position with your engine. And only then you start to you try to, to leave, but then you find out that your handbrake is still pulled off. So you pull down your handbrake and eventually you get on the road. But then at the first intersection, you have to, take, to turn left. Remember the first time you had to turn left? Oh my God, to turn left in a big intersection. This is, this is how it felt, right? This is exactly how it felt. I mean, you, well, what? I had to turn left, oh my God. And then right in the middle of the intersection while you were trying to do your best, Right? In, the, in the mirrors, there are vehicles coming towards you. And probably because we are living these times, right in front of you, there's an ambulance coming towards you. And right then, right then, in that intersection, your girlfriend starts up the radio. Your nerves are like very tight. You are like, oh my God, I want to get out of this intersection. But exactly then, your girlfriend starts the radio. What you do, you explode. Because that's the, ex the, that's the additional amount of stress that you just can't take anymore, okay? Why? Why does this happen? Because you don't know your car. Turning time 10, year, 10 years later, you will drive, you'll be very relaxed. Would you ever look at this? Almost never. By, by how you hear the car, this is when you have to, to, to shift gear, if, if you ever have a gear shifter anymore, right? Would you be stressed or driving? Probably not. You can actually engage in a conversation with no stress without being like, oh my God, I'm driving, right? Why does this happen? Because you know, you get to know your car. Now, me, two years uh, ago at J Point Conference, I started my talk with this line. I'm using Eclipse, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, and uh, despite that thing, okay, everyone laughed back then, but despite that, that despite being making fun of myself, at the end of the talk, someone uh, uh, gave me a feedback at the talk, please switch to IntelliJ. <laughs> I, was, I was looking for a long, for, for quite a while already to switching. So I've been 13 years of Eclipse. 13 years I've used Eclipse. But then after exactly that talk, I, I had the courage. <laughs> I was motivated enough to actually switch to, to IntelliJ. It took me six months of pain to, to, to learn and everything anew. Right? But then here I am, two years after, talking to you about IntelliJ. And let's see if I, if I, if I get it right. So please uh, help me with, with whatever, you, whatever idea you have, whatever thing you, I can do um, faster or easier, just add it in the chat. Now, we will start. So this, this is roughly what I'm trying to do with you today. Let's take it for first for, uh, step by step. The first thing I need to do is to, um, um, let's suppose you want to instantiate person. So I will have a class person. And then you want to get the first name from that, right? Get, now, uh, many people type get first, but wait a second. Get 
it's last name, it's not right. Get first, and then you can already press enter, of course. But what people, what many people don't know is that you can actually type the first letters of the words which compose the token that you are looking for. GFN gets you the first name. Done, you get the string. Now, this is an expression over there that returns the string, isn't it? Now, what we need to do typically is to define a variable. How would you do that? Well, the way that I do it is alt enter enter. This will do two things. We'll define the variable with the correct type, and it will also put the beloved semicolon at the end of the row. Right? There are other ways you can extract a variable with the shortcut of control alt By the way, in the corner, there are shortcuts displayed in Windows and both Mac. So in case you want to watch the recording afterwards, it will help you a lot. Right, so alt enter enter makes the variable, and this is why I almost never ever again define variables. Where I will first call a method, right? Call a method, person. Actually, let's make a variable from this person. There you go. And then on this person, dot get last name. Now, what the heck is that? This is impossible in Eclipse. But G, p dot gln, what? I call it this the over dot completion. Over dot completion, it means that you can put a dot and IntelliJ still figures out to what to complete the stuff. Okay? And this is the get, get last name, and there you go. This is your last name as a string. Alt enter enter. Now, with alt enter, I have a, I have a very, very deep relationship. I, ha I, actually, I actually wrote a poem for alt enter. When it's red, yellow, blue, or gray, alt enter will save your day. What do I mean here? Errors, warning, typos, anything which, which is colorful in IntelliJ, you will just alt enter, and then you will think, what must I do next? Okay? Uh, so this is like, you can measure seniority based on how frequent someone presses alt enter, right? in my opinion. Right? And there are uh, counterparts for the other ed editors out there. Good. So uh, last name, and this is like over dot. This also works with static. Um, what is LDT dot now? Ah, local date time, interesting. So local date time now is accessible just, so again, uh, instance expressions or static expressions, they both work with over dot, uh, over dot ex, uh, expansion. So this, uh, and uh, in enterprise uh, products, we need to have extremely large names. You can use it, uh, like um, you have a class named um, order processor and uh, validator service, right? And if, if that's a class name, Right, let's make this a class actually. There you go. Then if that's the class name, order processor and validator service. There you go. This is extremely useful in large projects, right? In, in enterprise projects. Good. Now, in this style, one more. Um, also with completion, uh, you can actually get access to this now thing that we've uh, we've just saw with local data now, but just by typing now. But this is a static method. Um, if you then press control space once, IntelliJ, IntelliJ will wonder, what, what do you want? I don't know. But then if you press it once more, it will get you the, um, all the now methods from everywhere that are statically available, right? Local date that, local date that now. Right, uh, but and this is extremely useful, uh, uh, especially in tests, assert equals. If you, uh, let's make a test for this. Uh, alt insert test. Uh, one more thing, alt insert, and I wrote test, type already, type. Let's do that, and let's make a test. This is, I will get to that, it's a live template, it already generates a test. Now, in a test, you will typically want to do assert equals. Now, assert equals, if you type it like that, it will, uh, it's already imported Jupyter assertions, but in case you didn't have that, assert equals is available if you control space twice. But then, if you control space twice, look how this feels. Assert dot assert equals. Uh, this is not what you want to leave behind. You want static import, right? If you alt enter this method, it will offer you, okay, static import this guy. But you know, something, something uh, 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 I, I learned something new last month. Someone from JetBrains, uh, look, I got, I got this mail once, so it was uh, March. I work in IntelliJ team. At first, I, I, I thought this guy was using IntelliJ, and I said to myself, hey, so what? I, we, most of us are. So. But then I, then I realized that I, I'm working in IntelliJ team for more than 15 years, and then I was scared. What the heck? This guy is working for IntelliJ for 15 years. Look what I replied to him. I found something developing the, the, the AI itself. I, I reached the source. All right. And this guy told me uh, in his mail uh, that uh, whenever I, I want to statically import a function, I can right here in this dialogue, I'll enter. Now, who, would, who would know that, really? 
I'll enter. I'll enter importatically. You see what, what happens? It, it's, it doesn't put assert dot assert equals. It imports statically. Coming back in my example over there, in the previous example, you want, you, you want now control space twice from local daytime now, alt enter imports statically. Done. Alt enter again, there's your variable. Ah, almost. I need to be now, alt enter, introduce local variable. There you go. So, uh, what I want to say here is that co static completion is available by quitting control space twice. So if you really know that the function exists out there and it's static, control space twice. Very useful for utility functions of your own. But if that function that you import statically is from GDK, I would typically recommend, or from JUnit, I would typically recommend static import by alt entering when you are looking at the uh, suggestions, basically. Quite amazing. Victor? Yes. I, I think I can add to this over dot completion, like, it looks impressive when you use it for one variable, but if you have two variables that start with the same name, let's say you have two persons, person one yes. and person two, and you still use this over dot completion by the first letter, let's show what happens. Nice, isn't it? All this, uh, yeah, very good. I didn't, I didn't actually explore this. Typically, yeah, yeah. So there are, it shows you all the possibilities. Very nice, very nice. Good. Uh, now, what I will, uh, how is this used in, in, in real life? You will get to use some, uh, so imagine you're working on, on a large uh, feature or a, a complex feature. You will be calling the same methods in many places, in many ways, you will try different things, and those methods will be very familiar to you. If that's the case, use this over dot completion by putting the names as much as you can, because get first name um, is very, get first name is very, very, you will get to know your model, right? There's one more, really. Um, and right to type the name of the, in case you don't know the entire, um, that's why I, 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 when I see people doing person, dot, get, first name, you'll always say get, right? Most of the time, this is Java, so first name. You skip this and it will uh, match it. And it, it, in time, you will actually just type this. It will expand. So it can uh, contains, it works with the contains, but it will also work with the first letters of the words that co compose that thing. Very good, very good. Now, <clears throat> type safe smart completion, what that is, let's see. Um, there is a method taking a movie somewhere in the code base. How can I find it? Select the token, control shift F. There is no, but let's, let's, let's create our, our own method. So uh, I'll do the little live template. I'll explain how you can do this yourself. So imagine you have a method that takes a movie as a parameter, movie. And by the way, if you, if you declare movie, guess what the name would be? So movie, control space, movie, duh. And then how do you actually start writing the method? Well, you can click down and you say, actually, really, I don't really need to, to, to code anything. I just have to have this method. And then let's assume that you have here somewhere a movie, 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 right? Right. And then you have to call this method. Oh, I have to pass some arguments here, title and price code, title and price code. Now, even with this price code, you can see this example. Um, can you? Ah, not quite. But the next one, method taking a movie. This is not available because it's not static, right? And I'm in a static context. So let's make this static first. And then make on take, make method taking a movie. I'm just I just type the the letter starting each word. And then if you control space, you will find a lot of suggestions, don't you? But tell me what 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 why would anyone use continue this expression with robot? You are trying what? You are trying to provide a movie to this function. So IntelliJ figured out that you are in a place in which by con by context you need something of type movie. So what you do? If you just control space, nah. Yeah, the first suggestion is the right one, but all the others might be a bit confusing, right? So what, what you, I would advise you to do is to use smart completion, which is control shift space. Now, this is a bit scary because it automatically finished the expression, but let's assume you have two movies going on. And if you control shift space, it will provide all the possible movies, right? Which is really amazing. So it will show you all the expressions which match the type corresponding to what you are planning to, what we have to provide in that position, right? Now, this is very useful if, for example, that would be an enum, but that, that now is a, is a constant, like in the 90s. So let's convert this into an enum, sh sh shall we? How do we do that? Well, um, it's a lot of typing, right? You have to do an enum, 
put all the values, but let's try it public. You know, uh, moving one of the categories, category. Now, um, I would invite you all to do exercises like this and to search for the least amount of keystrokes to type to get the work done. Let me show you what, in this regard, is the fastest way to get uh, the constants into an enum for changing this. I will just select these lines, duplicate the lines, take the lines up, then select some part of this line which is common for all the lines, and then press Alt-J. Alt-J is one of the features which uh, were most amazing for me, a former Eclipse user. This gives you three cursors. Look, Ma, I deserve three times the salary. I can type much faster. You get three cursors, and the best part is that you can actually hit end, and your cursor will move there. Right, so if you carefully just adjust the code, you're done. There is an extra comma, but you're done. In a constant amount of keystroke, almost constant, no matter how, how many of these would be, you just have to select the tokens everywhere. Amazing, this one, in, S in SQL, in insert scripts. It works even in, in, in JavaScript or any, anywhere, basically, in any editor, uh, editing any file. Right. And it's ex extremely useful even in non-structured languages. But in Java, it can get you very, very fast. Oh, and by the way, I wouldn't name it like that, right? I'll J again. Uh, Victor, Victor, sorry for interrupting you. Could you please, please increase increase your fonts? Because sure. yeah, sure. yeah. Thank you very much. This is from my side. No thank problem. you. Thank you. Sure. So again, I was doing this and I'll J. I was category and select the token which repeats everywhere where you where you wanted. I'll J. There you are. Good. So now let's migrate this to be the to be this this guy. Now there are there is also a type migration refactor, but let's go do it um, brutally. Let's all, I will start by like that, and then here it's red. When it's red, you remember the poem. Alt enter, change the field, no shit, <laughs> and then here getter, alt enter, make it return category, done, alt enter. Change the parameter. So you just fix it everywhere with alt enter, right? Oh, this is grayed out, alt enter. Split. So you look at the corals, oh, alt enter. Master, master, this can be final. You say, what? Some people don't really even know that immutable objects are a good thing. So when you see this suggestion, you get to wonder, wow, they've made a, a yellow suggestion about that, whoa. So immutable objects really are, really, really is something, right? Not only then. Yes, please. Uh, by the way, you can also do this for all fields at once. Uh, if you select like uh, Alt Enter and press right arrow. Uh, uh, you mean to, 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 um, to uh, this one? Yes, fix all fields. Fix maybe all. Final. I didn't yes. know that. Thank you. Fix all fields, maybe final. Perfect. Perfect, indeed. And you have, you have a big, large class, you're migrating from some legacy code. Excellent, 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 excellent. Good. This can be can disappear. Now, there is something funny here. Recently, I, I think not more, not more than six months ago, they've added this feature, click, and you navigate to all the places in which this does not compile anymore. So movie dot, and this guy needs to be replaced with movie dot category dot. Guess what? I'll do again, category. And what to completion with RJ? This is insane. Dot. Done. What? And we will come, we'll come back to here and we'll see. Is there any problem left? Yes, there is. Here. This is a switch on an enum this time. And when you switch on an enum in Java, you don't need to repeat the name of the. It's by synthetic sugar. You can just leave this. Oh, coming back. And no more problems around here. Good stuff. I, I should be the best one thing. Okay. There you go. Uh, by the way, another thing which comes very handy in pair programming uh, is uh, control plus scroll. You need to enable this in the settings to change the zoom. Like, um, it's way faster. Good. Uh, what else? Is, uh, OK, I, they shouldn't have, I shouldn't show you this, because it can get you a bit um, depressed. But this is Java 7, actually 17 will be the long-term supported version for this feature, switch expressions. I, 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 it's not fair showing this to you, right? And especially it's not fair if, if I push it just, just a bit more, return price, uh, return price. It's the same, right? I mean, look for yourself. 
<laughs> and the moment you realize this, this might be this, the case, alt enter on the return. Move return closer to computation. What? Again, I'm here at the end of the function, and I realize that I could have returned from every case. Alt enter, move return closer to computation. Now, this is extremely powerful technique because sometimes you might not be careful. Oops, a bug. You might not be careful because that might there might be a line. At that moment is not okay, is not correct to return from here, is it? Because this will never happen. So then whenever you have this feeling, this hinge, this that you could move the return earlier, uh, don't don't actually do it yourself, but ask IntelliJ, IntelliJ, can I do it? No. Damn it, why not? Because of this. Right? If this were not here, IntelliJ will tell you, yes, you are right, I can move the return earlier. Right. Good. Now, it's still there's still a return happening over there, and I wonder why, because the zero, of course. So the variable from here, the zero, will be returned from here. Right. Which makes this redundant. And now um, uh, there is a bit much, a bit more to to express, but uh, is it? Let's let's try. Alt enter. No, but uh, in in Java 17 you could do this. Actually, it's a bit tricky. I'll, I will show this feature uh, maybe later. But the the trick the trick is here: move return closer to computation means that you um, tell IntelliJ to put return as early as possible and it will not make mistakes out of this, right? Good, now, what I wanted to show here is that if category is here with some name, by the way, there is a typo in here, do you see it? Some people don't see it, but IntelliJ does. So there you go, typo, rename to. What do you want to rename it to? Children, done, everywhere. And with enums, things get interesting when you call a function. Uh, basically, even when you call the constructor, let's see what happens here. If you do control space, you will see the options, but you see they will be interweaved with other things for some reason. So there will be too many suggestions. And then coming back to what I wanted to show you, type safe, smart completion, control shift space. It's Victor, could you please uh, make font bigger again, yes, sorry. I guess? Let me handle it for everything. Yes, I think it's good right now. IntelliJ play here. Thank you. So, thank you. I should be careful indeed. Control shift space will only select you the those um, options which match the current context. So what were you trying to pass here? It's a category. Another shortcut which comes very handy, control P. Uh, it's um, uh, showing you the parameter that you are supposed to be passing at that position or the parameter which is passed if you move around. Very useful for large signatures. And then here, control shift space will only give you those options which are matching the current type, right? So smart completion, very, very, very useful in, uh, especially with enums and with complicated expressions. Right, now, <clears throat> there is one more thing that I know that there is, but to be honest, I don't recall exactly how you, how you, how you do it. It's called chain completion. You control shift space twice. Let's try. Meta taking a movie, and let's imagine you have a customer. Customer, good. And then this customer, alt enter, there's your variable. And then let's or, or, no, let's make a rental. Yes, a rental, a rental equals new rental. Good. Now, this means that I've instantiated the rental, and rental has a movie inside. Has a movie inside. Let's put a movie inside. And then I need a day's rent. There you go. But for some reason, it's red. Why? Because it's not public. Alt enter made it public. It was too fast, I know. Alt enter, it wasn't public, the class. Now it is. Now, let's call again method taking a movie. I need to pass it a movie, remember? And there is a movie in the rental. Control space now will show me these two options that are available then. Control shift space will limit to only those. Control shift space twice. Who does that? Control shift space. But you know, there is a point, there is a goal not to raise your hand from, from, from control space. I think that, that was a goal in, in a sense because you already have your, your hands in there. So control shift space, but if you insist, you will look, this is what I'm what, what a bit scares me. Searched for an expression that will give you back a movie. My God, right? The control shift space twice get you. Sometimes it's interesting. I didn't manage to use it 
that often in real life, but uh, it's very interesting what they thought and the philosophy of all these control sheet spacing and selecting. Right. Good. Now, another thing with auto-completion, which many people don't know, and uh, <clears throat> let's create, actually, let's, let's go to person. Now, this class person is a typical Java bean. Java language is old, has 25 years. We are not particularly proud of the habits we developed in this language, but getters and setters are something that we do very, very often. Now, you all know how to declare a getters and setters by getters and setters. The, the, all the developers I ever talked to know how to do that, right? But... <laughs> Not many of them know that you can actually generate the necessary ID by just typing the name, uh, the getter or setter, by just typing the name of the thing that you want to generate, which is super cool. Why is it cool? Because, you know, uh, if you want to do things carefully, especially in your entity model, you might not want to generate all the getters and setters for everything. You might want to protect some properties. You might not want to expose some properties. So add, insert, and generate then all the getters and setters might not be the smartest idea in real complex code bases. So instead, I will advise people to generate getters and setters on demand by just doing that. That, of course, if they are not hipster enough and getter and setter, okay? But the point is that you can generate getters and setters on demand by just typing the, their name. This works also for two string. Whoa, right? I mean, what the heck? Or even hash code equals. Everything, with, almost everything, that you could generate with alt insert, you can get with this hash code equals. Done, right? So just type the thing that you want, and it's there, right? Good stuff. Boilerplate completion for getters, setters, two string, and hash code equals. Right. Now, uh, let's assume for some reason that there are two methods with a different, different, or method different, but also taking a movie. Right? The, uh, and you want to change this call to point to the other method. Uh, so, very often you do that. Uh, there are cases in which you change uh, instead of, or maybe you, instead of, uh, yeah, you change the method that you call um, um, to another method. Now, if you look here, IntelliJ also already figured out that this was another match because based on the token that you have before the cursor, it matched this with contains. That's also a bit scary, but it, it did. Now, if you press here, enter, something bad will happen. You will have to get into the um, into the mindset of a oh, what I need to press delete 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 and as you press delete delete your brain is flushed away you forget what you were doing what was I doing I had a failing test what was that test about so uh, you you want peace of mind and you want ex by all means, you do not want to start selecting text with your cursor, or God forbid, with the mouse. You know? So you, you do not want to, uh, to, to exit the zone. You don't want to lose focus. So that's why here, you can just press tab. Oh my God. Again. This is brilliant. This is beautiful. This is, this is amazing, right? Uh, let's. Uh, I'm not sure if you all get the point right now. Let, let's uh, let's imagine that you want to change for getters. By the way, I didn't get generate all the getters and setters. So let me. Um, yeah, I, it's a demo, so I, I can do this, right? So I have this getter over here, but then I want to change to not first but last name. Again, if if I enter, garbage happens. Ab. Now in your mind there should be the, that song Ave Maria. Peace of mind, right? Good. Now, moving further. Uh, when probably uh, Nikolai saw this, she came to me with another suggestion. I didn't know about that, but let me show you how it feels. So imagine you have rental get movie, which gives you the movie. And then you realize that, well, I got the movie, but I want to call a function with this thing. So you want to, to get to the same thing, but you, you first type the expression, and then you realize that you have to call something else. Now, a typical, more close to you example is in case you have some repository, like Spring Data, which has a save method, which gives you back the same, let's imagine, customer, save, uh, customer, customer, right? Um, I just did something, and I, I need to 
control shift space, and then there is a missing semicolon, isn't it? But I, but I type is control shift enter, which finished my statement. I'll come back to this in a moment. But the point is you have this repository, and let's assume that you want, uh, this is customer repository, customer repository. And let's imagine that you have a customer repository over here, right? Now, this customer, let's make it null for otherwise it will not compile for a moment. And this customer repository, you want this, uh, this customer that you had, probably somewhere, to save it. You will get, so let's customer, customer, customer equals new customer. And then you want this to save. Uh, am I pushing too far? Maybe. Let's change it. Wait a second. I didn't, I didn't do the right thing. I should not have customer repository, but movie repository. Alt J. What are you doing? But anyway, and then there's a typo here. It should be movie actually. And again, up. And then uh, you want this movie to save to the repository. This is movie repository. You want to save it to the repository. Oh, come on. Movie repository. And then movie repository. <laughs> Every uh, refactor this, right? Movie repository dot save. Now, if you enter, it will call the save method. But then uh, Nikolai said me, uh, press control shift enter. Do it again. Look where, where, where my cursor is now. Control shift enter will call this between the brackets and we put the semicolon at the end. Even completion, amazing stuff. Going for this one. Rental get movie, good. And then this method different also taking a movie control shift enter. My friend, this is amazing. You type 20 characters in five keys, right? So this is um, basically wrapping the expression that follows in a method call. This is the purpose for that, right? Uh, it's called complete statement, and we will get to that very soon. And you know what? Actually, let's let's change to that because we've seen it several times already. We've seen it when we were here, and we wanted to end this declaration. Control Shift Enter, put the semicolon. Let's explore what other things you can do with it. So let's imagine that if, for some reason, the rental is null. Mind that intentionally, I've not put this space. I'm, I'm a clean code maniac. I, I'm really very careful with the formatting of my code. And I also know that when I commit, I could check these two so that it will automatically reformat the code. But still, I want to write it as clean as possible from, from start. So here, when I do this, I'm the, my cursor is exactly here. What do you need to do next? You need to type the left character, brace, enter. We, I've done this for hundreds, thousands of times in Eclipse, but IntelliJ, Control, Shift, Enter. It put also the space, yes, <laughs> right? So it, it opened the statement that you wanted to write in the following. Also works in case you want to declare a new method, public, uh, void, some method, and then you put, a, I need an int x, and then Control, Shift, Enter. It will figure what it needs to do. Good stuff. So this is like a, um, um, a complete statement, control shift center. The equivalent for, uh, for Mac is this. Uh, and you, um, for if, for methods, and for wrapping call around like Nikolai taught me. Very good, very good. Alj you already saw, right, for enums. Is to finish this section, uh, one last thing. Uh, when you type an if, Sometimes you type an if from scratch, but other times you want to set, to call this method in an if. Or maybe a, a code section. You want all this to happen in an if. Now, the typical way to do that is to do that if over here, open the brace, and then finish the brace over there. But that's a bit, com I mean, an annoying to click and to move and to work. Uh, the alternative is the following. Just select the code that you want to get into that. If, control, alt, t, and there you are, surround with. Now, from all these, my favorites, what I use all the time, is if, the first one, so I'll just select the block that I want, control, alt, t, which is this format, surround with, and what happens? You can type directly enter, and you get an event. You type your condition. Indentation, everything, brace is fixed by IntelliJ. This is the first one I used. Oh, very often. And the second one is try-catch. Or even try-catch finally. A lot of, 
you get a lot of sp speed of it, you just do that and you're you're done. Okay. There are Victor. other things. Look, yes, please. Uh, if if you uh, if you need to uh, rub just one statement, you don't even need to select it. It's just yes. enough if you have a cursor you standing. Just there. Put the cursor on that. Control Alt T, and it was, and that's actually happening, kind of if anything you do with refactoring. For uh, for example, if you want to extract a method out of this line, only this line, or maybe you want to extract a method from this line, you just uh, put it here method. And there you go, you get the method. So again, for this method, if you look in that method, the code went in there. So um, in general, if before doing an action, if there is a single line that you are involved, first try to, to click a single, uh, I mean, just uh, directly refactor without selecting anything. Yes, yes. Uh, now, when, when we way, there are, uh, yes, please. I guess there are uh, numbers in this list, so you can use them as shortcuts. You can just type like six and or, right. or something. Right, yes. right, right, right. Very good. And when we prepare this, um, Anton told me that one of his one of the things that he also uses is to uh, region fold. Is this yeah. is it? Yes, this and is region. the one. And, and then you you can fold this in and out. Right. Interesting thing. Um, maybe extracting a method would also work, especially interesting in case you want to, I don't know, show some code progressively. So region, this is something, yeah, specific, I think, for, um, for IntelliJ. Good. Tapping width. Also a four, you can do a, a four, but with a four, there are a different thing happening, you'll see. Um, let's actually go there. How do you iterate over these numbers? So let me give you a, a to-do. Um, uh, square the not the odd numbers and print them. Print them. Square the odd numbers and print them. Well, let's first play Java Seven. I mean, prior to Java Streams. So let's see numbers. How would you iterate over numbers? Now, most developers when they start learning Java, they will uh, four. And then right, well, what's the element? And this question only breaks your flow. What was the type of that element again? It's, you need to search where the collection is. Oh, it's an integer. Integer number. Well, should I kill it number or n or nah, number? And already you forgot what we're doing. And then numbers. And then Victor comes and tells you that you should have an extra space in there. So there are a lot of things happening that is not that not very good plus in this position exactly i should press complete statement control shift enter and it opens the block like before with the if but there is a far better way of iterating which actually follows the train of thought and i love this 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 feeling that how do you normally do iteration you first get the collection right uh, in this case it's already there but other times it might be buried in some let me instantiate the customer new customer, and this customer might have inside, I'll enter, enter, here's a customer, this customer might have inside, uh, get, oh, does it, doesn't it have, get rentals, let's let assume we have a collection here, list of rental, rentals, of course, rentals, out of suggestion, huh? and then a getter for rentals, enter. Now, in case a customer had a rental, you just have to type, you, you, you get to that rental, and then you want to iterate on those. This is typical. You get a collection from something, and you want to iterate on that. And what you have to do is to move to the beginning, four. And then what is the type of that thing again? Rental. Oh, oh, no, no, my friend. If you are here, dot four. This is absolutely brilliant. It expands to a four. This is so good, I always use it when I iterate over a collection. It puts already the type, it puts the spaces, it puts a, a, a name, which by the, by, by the way, it puts the singular, super cool stuff. And then um, this is how we will also iterate over these numbers here. So numbers dot four, enter. These are called postfix expansion. This is one of the most advanced features, in my opinion, in editing the code in IntelliJ. There are others probably that I don't know of yet, but this is extremely useful in day-to-day -day practice. And number numbers, right? And if, if, I not, if, I'm, if I don't mistake, this can actually 
Let's see, children. Oh, I forgot to rename this one. Recently, very recently, I don't know, three months, what, what? Very recently, if you add enter now, IntelliJ will allow you to repent and to refactor the code accordingly. Right, like this. And uh, uh, this particular window down here is a bit annoying because you have to move your mouse apparently to this, but no, actually if you hit Alt, there is a do here, Alt D. Children. And I'm curious, if you iterate on children, what is the singular? Child. <laughs> so yeah, very cool stuff happening here. Right. So child, and then uh, what you want to do is to filter and only leave the odd, the odd ones. What it means to do an odd? Well, first of all, let's revert to number because having odd children is a bit strange. <laughs> so numbers dot fall, and it's number. And now if number modulo two equals one, this is the condition for being odd number. If dot if, what do you mean dot if? I didn't say it, what do you mean dot if? Dot if, oh my God, right? And then what? Yeah, I need to squ square them. Square them. Uh, let's uh, let's multiply by yeah, okay. Number times number, and you want to print this to the console. Dot s out. Oh my god. Oh my god. This is this is insane. What do you mean dot s out? Um, and this works. Uh, this works amazingly for uh, even if you if you type some more elaborate expressions. The result is this is really what's what's really specific to your case, right? The other one, the other things are just are just boilerplate. That's all. This is so good, so good, so good that you want to create your own such postfix expansions. Let me first give you the example, the, 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 remind you the taste of production code. Logger factory. Does it sound familiar? Logger factory. Wait, do I have it? Yes. Logger factory. SLF4J. There you go. Dot. Get. I should define it. Let's play dumb for now. Logger from SLF4J, log, typically that's the case. Uh, and I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But just for a moment, I'm playing, I'm playing dump. Logger factory, get logger name. Okay, I didn't know that. What, what happened? Oh my God. Uh, actually, that's not IntelliJ here. That's Kodota, a plugin which takes typical snippets from GitHub and suggests you do I mean, what the fuck? Right, and then the name is IntelliJ Play. Dot class, of course. If you want to be super, super geek, you can write IntelliJ Play. Dot class. Huh? This doesn't work yet. <laughs> gotcha. IntelliJ Play. Dot class. Good. But then this, of course, private static final. And this is a, a live template. It will expand to this when I press enter. Okay. But that's not public, right? Private. Right. Good. And then this log you always have in your code. And then you want to log this to that. How do you how do you do that? Log dot debug. You always put things on debug, right? Log debug. And then you, you start typing this thing. Now, log debug is something that you can uh, let's create a live template that will allow us to say in this position dot log. Let's see how we can do that. Let's go to settings, postfix. Uh, there are actually several of them that I created my, myself. Post six. There are, this is the standard ones. Uh, let's create a, a new one. New. Java. The key to trigger it, it's dot log. Any Java works. Applicable. Now, this uh, is applicable to expressions. What are you know, primitive types using IntelliJ or intercast? Uh, non void. Perfect. And what expression? Vic Victor, Victor, yes. stop, stop. You're doing it as, a, as an Eclipse user. <laughs> oh, sorry, you're doing postfix completion, right? Yes. Okay, yeah, sorry. I was thinking that you're doing live template. Uh, we will in a moment. And you can, you can correct me then. But for now, okay. All I right. just want to do log that debug expression. Now, this expert stuff is the thing that will, look, it tells you here, it's the expression that you will have before that dot. And in case there will be multiple expression tokens in the syntax, you can check this to apply to the topmost. It means that if you, if you do a plus over there, it will apply to the whole stuff. And let's try it now. Oh, yeah. So good, right? So every time you get to some value, let's imagine that you get to, I don't know, uh, rental. 
You want to print the rental movie. Log. Done. Right? Almost done because it's not a string, so ah, yeah, so almost, almost done. Good. Uh, now, we've done that, which is live templates, quite powerful. But now, let's, what the heck is this? And I know, I know about Log Lombok, but can't we do this automatically? Let's try. I mean, can we generate all this automatically? You can, you can, because you've already seen some things happening here. You see? Some expansion happening automatically. And let's do that next. Live templates. Live templates. And uh, let me go to Java first. And now you can prepare to correct me, but Java, Zen, what the heck? The how many languages, okay? But I'm only using Java for now. So Java, and I will hit plus live template. Now, the abbreviation will be log, let's say log S from SLS4J. This is the expression, right? Now, let's put the space in order here, log equals la la la. And now here should be something specific to the current class. Now, what is the current class? I don't really know, but I could put here current class and then edit the variables. Whoa, what do you mean? Current class will evaluate to class name. Is it so? A class, class name, there you go. And I think it's keep of, keep of defined, I think, so that I don't need to worry about that. One thing gets our attention, no applicable context. So this is like Java declaration. Why is it declared? Now, I'm not entirely familiar with all of these particular forms, but declaration will fit where you declare fields at least. So let, let's try again now. Log, let's assume that we didn't have a log at all in this class. At all. Log S, enter. Almost, but I have to import this statically. I have to import this. You have to alt enter those. And this is a bit annoying. So to avoid that, look what, look what, what you can do. You can actually uh, prefix, let me show you. You just put this for a second here and here. Let me go back to my life template. I mean, this would work if I import it like that, right? So in my life template, what I need to do is to prefix this and this with SLF4D and then check this checkbox. Shorten fully qualified names. The fully qualified name will be transformed into an import statement at the top. Good stuff. So now let's assume that you didn't have all this. Nothing. So no import, nothing. Log S. Done. Okay. Okay, Victor. I this is where I have to correct you a little bit. Please. So the way you defined live template was uh done as an Eclipse user, right? You went okay. through the wizards, you opened a few pop-ups, you defined like you clicked the checkboxes and stuff. Instead, if you already have this code written. Shift, shift, save as live template. Oh, 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 oh. All right. And, and you uh, have everything, and you will just, you know. Let me read this on you. And it's, wait, 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 wait. Let, let, let me do this. So, live template, save as live template. Right. And right. it asks me in what it is user. Oh, okay, okay, okay. And let's say log s. Good stuff, good stuff, good stuff, and uh, Java declaration. <laughs> oh my god! Right, done. And let's try. Let's test it. Let's remove the imports. Remove the imports. And again, <laughs> good one. Very good one. Thank you. But it Thank didn't you. create the. It didn't create the uh, variable automatically. So <laughs> it's you always. I'm being, I'm being yes, yes, yes. So it's it's the same method. class. Yes. I need to. Yes. Print class. Very good, but you get the same point with, without copy. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Um, the, the best, in um, uh, my opinion, the best kind of left templates are those that are depending on the context that you are in. But you can find, I, I once heard of a guy who was selling, selling on money, the collection of life templates he wrote for Kubernetes scripts, for example. He was selling the, the life templates, my God, with all the, Places the tokens. I mean, it can get very powerful. It can, if, if you don't check this checkbox, let, let, let's try again. Well, what will happen now? You see, I have to check. To, to, I can. This is not yet uh, completely done. There, you are free to do your stuff. I mean, you are free to to overwrite and to change the the token. There, let me let me show it again. 
log s and you can you see it's highlighted in blue you can type over this is this happens so you can have live large templates with with tokens that you traverse through but if you do not want to bother with that skip if defined will not ask you anything you'll just silently put that current class good stuff good stuff wow a oh, oh, lot of stuff we've covered what else navigation yeah some easy stuff first back forward you all know that control alt left in windows in mac is strange keys but yeah to navigate like in the browser back and forth back and forth okay that's the first thing you learn <laughs> where you are and then recent files control e now um uh, if you use, if you get to use, if you are, if you are, get familiar to control E, using it very often, you will at some point do like my 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 friend and colleague Razvan. Razvan, sorry, uh, he he was doing the following. He will he would code in presentation mode or in in Zen mode, I think. Distraction or Zen mode. The point is, there are no tabs. Where the heck are your tabs? Where are your tabs? So, you don't need uh, the tabs. You don't need the tabs, of course. Control E. You navigate. I mean, even the. I mean, the the what you realize, what they realize is that really um, um, looking at the tabs and clicking the tabs is something that distracts you too. You need to what? What? Where is the person? Oh my God! No, the so, Control Tab also works like in Chrome, like in any browser. Control Tab shifts you to the previous and you know, previous, then before, previous, previous. This works perfectly. But uh, if you are like like me and Anton and probably with Agui that work with thirty files at uh, at, at once opened, it, it won't help you to Control Tab ten times, of course. So Control E will get you fast to the files that you've recently seen. Now. Anton told me that if I clicked Control E once more, I will only show the changed files. Changed files. The files that I've changed in this section. So I didn't change the local daytime, right? Changed files. Good stuff. And Shift Shift also works, to my knowledge. But Shift Shift gives you too many options, too many. So Control E is basically for files. Uh, correct, uh, please add things that I didn't sh told. If I, 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 there are many multiple other things you can do with this, but don't recall them. Control E. Um, yeah. Anyway, good. Then one other thing in a typical enterprise program, when you do a large change request, you typically change hundreds and hundreds, but up to a dozen files, right? Before you commit, it will be very useful to see all the places that you ever changed. This is what is useful without doing a, a without doing a tentative commit and looking at the diffs. This is so to quickly navigate. Control Shift E will show you the snippets that you have changed recently. So I have worked in this IntelliJ play. I've changed this enum in the movie. I've changed the log, right, and so on and so on. All the places showing you just the several lines up and down. I've added this, right. So Control Shift E will can be very useful to remember what you just did, very useful. Then another thing uh, that uh, is very especially useful in these times we live today, in which you might want to move a piece of logic from one place to another. Let's suppose you want to move uh, uh, this part to another method, right? And you, or to another completely class, and you don't want to use refactoring or you can't use refactoring. So what you do, you Control X, then your kids enter the room. And chaos begins. And after 15 minutes, what was I doing? And you may even forget about the thing that you copied. And you may, you may copy another thing. And then, <gasps> my clipboard, oh no, my clipboard, oh no. Control Shift V, my friend. Control Shift V, everything that you ever copied, including your credit card numbers <laughs> in Chrome. <laughs> but don't mind that, even Windows remembers everything. Windows V. <laughs> Shows you everything you've ever copy pasted, right? So a clipboard history, something very useful. Yeah. Well, uh, in IntelliJ, uh, it saves only what you copied from IntelliJ, so it won't. Let's see. Uh, unlike Windows, it should not. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Oh. Yes, it was the last one. But if you copy it, for example, several times in external application, ah, let's it, see that. it will not. It doesn't really matter. 
No, it doesn't really matter because Windows already, any, no, anyway, knows. But the point is, if you forget something that was in the past, you can get it back, right? You can get it back. That's the essence. Right. What else? Java 8. Wow. Wow. Right. Let's, well, how much time do I have? 10 minutes? And I have to finish three, min three minutes before, right? Or something like that. Do I have seven minutes? In case there are questions from, from the audience, please don't hesitate to shoot them. Here. Four. Let's twist this. I don't want to print them, but collect them to a list. Now, what would I do? <laughs> don't do that. List. No, come on. No. But um, you know what? Just, just for now, just bear with me. List of, oh my God, integer like uh, results equal. And now Codota kicks in and tells me that if you've defined this, you probably want. To say new list. <laughs> Thank you. Right? Or new linked list. Never linked list. We never <laughs> use linked. But it suggests you. <laughs> That's a mistake. <laughs> In 30 <laughs> years of Java, I've used linked list only twice, and that was a key actually, not a mistake. But you so should file a bug for Codota. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, but I do have to tell you something. When I say, uh, let me make me a, a new file. When, when I say, um, another, another live template, by the way. Uh, when I say list of string, and just that. Oh, you do import it automatically. Uh, never mind, never mind. So um, coming back here, this is the results, and let's add to the results. Results. E dot add, oh my god, the number, number times number. Good. Now, all of this is Java 7 style, and you might be migrating, in a sense, to Java 8 style. Now, if this were Java 8 styles, if you want to make it Java 8, you can collect. Now, if you ask me, I don't, I, I am terrified by the effort that it took those guys from, you guys from JetBrains, to actually make this in place, because it is incredibly complex in terms of syntax. But look, what it's this bit, dot filter, dot map. So I will buy a beer to the guy that really implemented this. It's incredibly difficult to, to do, because it's... Sorry, I don't drink beer. It can be incredibly complex. So what, 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 what I got? So this is a filter. This is a map. My God, my God, the idea, right? So they will, they will trip, they will pick those syntax parts from the from the expression below. And in case you uh, you you your lead has uh, uh, fifteen years of experience in C <laughs> and doesn't like the stream new stuff, you can anytime you can everywhere anytime collect uh, come back to the to the loop. So this is bidirectional actually, right? Uh, so this kind of also takes out the pride that I've seen many developers taking pride in the fact that look the string that I can write. My friend, uh, your tool can convert to this. So it, there is no really, really magic in this. So give up that stupid pride that you, that you oh, look, stream, filter, map, correct. Okay. Done. So this is, thank you a lot for this feature. It's quite amazing to dem demystify the streams, basically. Good. But now, how could we write this from scratch? Let's try that. Numbers dot, how would you, well, what would you type next? Numbers, let's type numbers. And after you get the collection, you would probably start typing stream. But three months ago, I think, they've made it that you can skip typing stream over directly filter. There you go. And then n arrow, n times, uh, times uh, modulo, two equals one, and then map, Oh, one more, one, one another, another good stuff. Let's imagine you had a, a method uh, which actually returns uh, n times n. Now, this needs to come as a parameter, okay? and this needs to return stuff. Almost not n, not an object. It's integer, and then integer, and then here, alt enter. Make method return int. So uh, this is called, my friends, alt enter driven development. You you do your stuff and then alt enter your way back to code to, comp to compiling code. And if I make this method static and I will name it square, I can do the following stuff here: map control space. So you know what? Control shift space, isn't it? 
Oh, completion to a four dots that is in the context. Why? Because this matches the type that I am looking for. That is a function of int to int. Oh my God, right? And then at the end, collect list. Now, I've seen people typing collect and then, oh, you only need to type to list. I usually type CTL, collect to list. You can collect to list, you can collect to set, or you can collect to joining if this were a stream of strings. There you go. And these are the, oh, one more thing here. Afterwards, um, hang a second. I'm moving too fast, good. And then at the end here, Alt enter on this, can make it static. And the whole line right now is not assigned to anything, right? So to, to assign it, just Alt enter, introduce local variable, done. Now, every time you put two stream operations, it is my advice to break it into several lines. If you do just one filter and then collect, it can fit a line. But if there are multiple steps, make it in a separate. And that's it, you get the same you can thing. Actually set up, you can actually set up a code style to do this automatically. All right. And, and this, uh, I, I, I don't know how to do that. The conversions, you always like this. I don't know how to do that, but I've seen people, I've seen teams having such shared uh, coding styles and then at commit checking these two things so that they will never uh, concern about our let's format code. They did have to do a reformatting of the entire project. Okay, that was a big bang for them. But after that huge commit, they will just not care about formatting. It will be automatically, right? Uh, the styling for this, for me, I don't know how to, what to show in that regard. <laughs> Right, so what we saw just now is Java 8, Alt enter on a stream to make it forward and back. Collecting, CTL collects to, to set and collect joining. Sk uh, you can skip the stream part and you can auto completion even with the four dots. And we saw it with control shift enter from above. Sorry for talking only in Windows terms, the translations will be on the recording in the third corner uh, that I showed you. Navigation, one last thing that I really love. We are close, we're getting close to the end. We will recap one minute at the end. But one one thing that I really love, uh, two last things, actually. <clears throat> one, uh, the first thing is, imagine you are in a big legacy code base, big legacy code. Java does have a huge legacy out there. And Could you the font, increase the font a little bit? Uh, yes, sorry, sorry. <laughs> it was legacy code. You know? <laughs> but, uh, but the point is that we want to take only the part inside the if. But you see, this bracket starts here and ends 20 lines, 20, 10 screens down, uh, uh, below. Now, people, some people install a Rainbow Brackets plugin to make them colorful and to enjoy the colors of life. But I'm not that guy. I will instead use a programmatic way to do that. Look what I did. I'm here, Control W in Windows, extends the selection to the syntax block which surrounds my cursor. And I can, look, if, you, if, I, keep, if, I, if I keep pressing it, it will select more and more syntactic blocks together. If I control Shift W, it will get back to where I was, constricting the selection. So what, to extract the body of the if, I only need, need to do that. Right? M. And I get all the if, all the body of the if out. This is one thing. Another thing, I've showed you with early return, move return closer to computation. But there is another thing. One guy that was doing out of legacy told me once that uh, when I, whenever I see this, declarations of variables like in the old, like in the days of C, I always alt enter every variable and move the declaration closer to usages. Hey, where is it used? There, and so on and so on. So it is just like you can, you can this is actually not used anymore. L, you can, this is, you can do this blindly. Move it closer to the where it's being used to make it more easy to read, really. Mm -hmm. Friends, we've kind of finished. This was it. Move return closer, move variable definition closer. Define variable with alt enter on any expression that you ever wrote. Java 8, we just said. This one we saw, we saw recently. And completion over dot. Completion of statics, completion with that keeps track, that keeps into account the type that you need to provide in that in, in the cursor position. Uh, com, com, uh, generating boilerplate with directly typing it. Tab completion overwriting the stuff, and that magic thing that Nikolai showed me with wrapping call around. So you just call a method before the expression. Control Shift Enter wraps the expression within. Alj really a good cool feature. Surround with and custom live templates, custom postfix templates. And I'm done. And I'm 
I didn't exceed my time incredibly. For me, something incredible. Any questions, any ideas from the... the well, the very first, the yes. very first uh, question that we had in the chat, how do you annotate uh, the stuff on your screen? Oh, uh, in the, so it's Windows only. It's called Zoomit. It's a sys internal free tool. And you can drag and stuff and woo -ha. Very cool for presentations. <laughs> <laughs> not, 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 there is no such thing for Mac. Oh, I have 30 more seconds. Can I use them for some reason? Look, you might wonder, okay, how the heck do, how the heck do you get this fast? Okay. Um, the only advice that I can give you is to take some refactoring kata from this uh, git, from this uh, um, website and solve it. Solve it and try to try to find ways that you will type less, and at the end count down yourself to see how much time it takes you to. That being said, I'm done. Thank you. Cool. So, anything else? It's about time to finish. So there will be a Zoom room, right? Yeah. So thank you very much, Victor, for this amazing and funny presentation. I know uh, probably they, uh, we have time for only one question, and it, it will be mine one. Uh, what is your favorite IntelliJ ID plugin? Oh, hey, tough question. Um, tough question. I need presentation assistance because I train all the day. So yes, I need that. But when I when I when I ask people about this, the answer shocked me. Ah, I love it. Yeah, the this, same shit. Yeah, okay. According to what I yeah. asked on Twitter, is the most is the best yeah. plugin IntelliJ. Has. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely agree why. with you. Okay, thank you very much, Victor, and. Uh, uh, all the participants, please do, do two things. First, uh, push button with their, uh, which allows you to estimate the talk with from one to five stars and comments. We love it. We love feedback. Do you love feedback, Victor? From our audience? Yes, yes. I would like yes, to hear all your feedback. That's yeah, what I love. Yeah, we are waiting for your feedback. <laughs> and another one thing, just after that, press the Zoom button under the web player and go to uh, discussion done with uh, Victor Tagir and Anton, where we can ask you questions verbally and continue the discussion. Thank you very much, Anton Tagir and uh, Victor. Victor, thanks, thanks, thanks. It's a great honor for us uh, to have all of you guys on board this year. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. Folks.